In this presentation, we're going to return to the statistics on our weather data. We're going to review the box and whiskers plot. We're going to define outliers, and then we're going to look at conditional formatting at the end. The data that we're analyzing comes from Weather Underground. It's history data, a month's worth of history data, uh, July of 2020 for the city of Philadelphia. And we're going to be focusing on the maximum temperature for each day. Highlight the data you want to analyze. For me, that was B3 through B33. And then go to Insert, Statistical Chart, and then choose Box and Whisker. The icon for Statistical Chart and for Column Chart look an awful lot alike, so take an extra second to make sure you've grabbed the right one. So we see here the resulting box and whisker plot. The sort of filled in blue rectangle is the box and the sort of thinner part is the whisker. My y-axis originally went from a minimum of zero up to a maximum of 100, but my lowest data was like 77. So I right clicked on the y-axis and changed its minimum so that I would be utilizing more of the space of the graph with my uh, whisker box and whisker plot. I gave my chart a new title and then I wanted to play with the look of it a little bit. So I right clicked on the data and chose format data series. In the format data series pane that pulled out on the right side and under the series options icon, I checked the box show inner points. And then on the fill in line, the paint bucket icon, I played with the transparency and it was zero and I made it uh, more transparent as we will see. You can see here the results of my previous formatting that you see more dots within the box and whisker plot and that the box is uh, more see-through. Uh, remember that the box and whiskers plot is representing all of these statistical measures. The X sort of toward the middle is the position of the mean of the data. The center line going through the blue box represents the median. The lower edge of the blue box is the first quartile, and the upper edge of the blue box is the third quartile. Other features seen in this box and whiskers plot include the maximum, which is the thin line at the top, the second smallest number, which is the thin line at the bottom, and then that dot, which is outside of the box and whiskers plot, which is the minimum. Now it is a separate dot outside of the box and whiskers plot because it was an outlier. If there were no outlier, then that line, that thin line at the bottom would have been the minimum. But since the minimum was an outlier, it is placed outside of the box and whiskers plot. I'm going to start moving towards a definition of outlier, which relies on the concept of quartile. So here I'm just reminding you of the function in Excel that gives you a quartile, equal quartile.inc, the, the inclusive version of quartile. There's also the exe version, but we'll, we will work with the inc version. And actually, five of our main quantities are can all be considered quartiles. So here I have the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and use those numbers as the second argument in the quartile function, the first argument being the data range. I'm using the dollar sign so that when I copy the formula down from B47 to B48, the B3, the 3 won't change, the B33, the 33 won't change, but the A47 without the dollar sign will become 48. And so the quartile argument, the second argument will change. The zeroth quartile refers to the minimum. The first, the, uh, an argument of one gives you the first quartile. The an argument of two gives you the median or second quartile. An argument of three gives you the third quartile. And the, an argument of four gives you the maximum. A common and convenient definition of an outlier is a point that 
lies more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the third quartile, or 1.5 times the interquartile range below the first quartile. And for us to know what that means, we must next define interquartile range. And this is just the difference, meaning that we're going to subtract uh, the third quartile and the first, so the first quartile from the third quartile. So here we are calculating the interquartile range. So you can see the formula in F47 is equal to B50 minus B48. B50 is holding the third quartile and B48 the first quartile. So this is the difference between the third and the first quartile. The interquartile range can be thought of as a measure of spread in that 50% of the data uh, lies within this, uh, in this case, range of six degrees. The definition of outlier uses 1.5 times this interquartile range. And so in F48, we are just finding out that 1.5 times F47, which was the interquartile range. The outlier may be on either side of the data, so we have to define two limits. The lower outlier limit, we are going to take the first quartile and subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that was in Excel equal B48 minus F48. B48 held the first quartile and F48 held 1.5 times the interquartile range. That gave us uh, 79 degrees. The upper outer limit is then defined as the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And so that calculation is going to be B50, the third quartile range in this case, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And that ended up to be 103 degrees. We had seen all along that the, that the data had a an outlier on the lower end, the, the 77 degrees, that was lower than that limit of 79. And so we've had that little dot below the box and whiskers plot sort of the whole time. Here I just found the highest point, which was 97, and changed it to 104 to, to sort of force an upper outlier just to see what it looks like. It's that dot above the box and whiskers, the main box and whisker plot. And then I'm going to turn it right back to the 97 than it was, but I just wanted to see what it looked like. Another way to sort of visualize, to see features of the data is to use what's known as conditional formatting. So again, we're interested in those high temperatures in column B, highlight them. And then you can go over, if you're on the home, home menu, go over to the conditional formatting and click on the drop down list. And I'm going to work with uh, highlight cell rules and the greater than option there. One definition of a heat wave is three or more days in the 90s. So toward that end, I'm going to use this conditional formatting to, to change the formatting, to change the look of all the days where the temperatures got into the 90s. So I'm using this greater than approach, so I want the temperatures to be greater than 89, therefore they would be in the 90s, and I'm going to change their formatting and making it light red fill with a dark red text so they will stand out. And here I want to show that the cells can support multiple rules. So I went back to conditional formatting and now I'm working with the less than approach and I'm looking for days in which the temperatures were in the 70s. So I'm looking for it to be less than 80. And then it's important to remember to change the, the format style. Otherwise it'll be marked the same as the days that were in the 90s and will become confusing. So here for the days that were less than 80, I am formatting it with a green fill and a dark green text. If you've made mistakes or just decide that you don't like this approach, then you can get rid of your rules simply by going to conditional formatting and choosing clear rules.